Today on CJ Off-Road, we're going to be checking out my Overland M416 trailer. I'm going to take you guys through it, show you some of the main features and exactly how I build it. Now I picked up this 1966 military trailer about a year and a half ago. It was picked up at an estate sale through a local government auction and the original owner had it since 1972 sat in the backyard of his house and he used it to haul mulch and basic things around so it was in rough shape when i originally got it. it had moss growing on the tires it was all original besides the hitch on the front had been cut when i got it i had the full intention of building an overland trailer what i wanted was something i could tow behind my off-road rig be able to go to any camping spot and set up and be self-sufficient now i'm going to take you guys around and show you some of the features that i've incorporated into this trailer and how i got them done So the first and most important part for me was being able to be self-sufficient and I needed a power source to do so. So I went ahead and got a deep cycle battery and put it inside a tongue box right on the front here. Now I'm running a deep cycle battery with a NOCO Genius Tender on it. I can plug into shore power and have all the power going right into this battery and maintaining everything I have on the rig. I also have a trigger system in there which powers all of the accessories up top here, including my seam lights and my cargo lights. So those turn on, it's really great at night to be able to set up and have some lighting features. And everything is tucked away nicely. I've got an inverter in there as well. That way I can run all the powered accessories that I need when I'm out camping. As far as wheels and tires for the trailer, I decided to go with a 515 bolt pattern. This is a 15 inch wheel that you actually have to special order. Now the hub bores on the trailers are bigger. So I ordered this from a trailer place and then wrap that around with a set of these Goodyear Wrangler Authority tires. You can pick these up pretty cheap and they last a long time. The empty trailer weight on this is 603 pounds, which compared to a vehicle of four or five or even 6,000 pounds, it's a lot lighter. So you're gonna get a ton of mileage out of here. Plus they make good traction for when you're heading off road. You don't wanna have like a bald tire on there. And I also had a big debate on whether or not to keep the original military wheels and tires. But if I'm driving on the highway as much as I am going to shows, I wanted to get a nice set of wheels and tires. So I went ahead and got these, balanced them out, and they ride perfectly. As far as the rack goes, I decided to use inch and a half square tubing to build this rack. Now the trailer's dimension is six foot long by four foot wide. The perfect adaption to that is going to be the Smittybilt XL Overlander 10, which I decided to put on the top. The mounting of that was perfect on the rack that I decided to build. And then a little bit after that, I wanted some more space to have some people sitting or be able to sit outside. So I went with an ARB 2500 series awning. I'm gonna get both of these opened up now and show you guys what they look like with the trailer and everything all together. We've got the tent and the awning deployed on my trailer and I absolutely love it when it's in this mode. Underneath the awning, it's a great place to just hang out, you know, have your chairs in that and then also cook right next to the trailer and I've got a little bit of a work area to get inside the bed and grab anything else that I need. Now the rooftop tent on top is the Smittybilt Overlander XL model. This features sleeping for up to four and a load capacity up to 760 pounds. Honestly, once you get up there, it's as big as a queen size mattress. It's huge, it has vents on the side, a rain fly, and as you guys saw, it folds up really nice and tight to about a foot tall and four foot wide. So you can throw that on top of your Jeep, on a trailer like this, or just about anywhere. ARB and Smittybilt, great quality products, and they install really easily. Overall, the trailer build was really fun. I decided to also coat the interior with a Herculiner. That way it would be nice and durable and not make any sort of scuffs or marks when I throw heavy duty camping equipment inside there. Tailgate's also removable. This is one of those old school tech moments where they decided to make it with a small pin on it and I just left it the way it was. The original was just welded in there, but I love the nostalgia of it and it works great for me. So just a great thing to have on there, throwing back to the 70s and it all works. It's all functional build. Now I had a lot of fun building this trailer. I picked it up locally to me and I think you guys will have a great time if you decide to build one of these. Most of the parts that we talked about today also are available at cjponyparts.com. If you guys have any more detailed questions or comments about the trailer, drop them below. I'll be sure to answer them and try and help you guys out if you're interested in doing a build like this. Hope you guys enjoy it and until next time, see you guys out on the trail.